With the latest on UTRGV, the next step towards the UTPA-UTB merger comes to a close as phase two of hiring finalizes. Before the new semester unfolds, students share their ideas and opinions at a tuition and fees forum last week. Who's behind the cafeteria's tasty treats? We'll provide you with an inside look at one of UTPA's longest tenured employees. Help is on its way. Charities in the Rio Grande Valley share the holiday spirit by preparing and donating food to families in need. Bullying at school has left an elementary school student and his parents with few options, but a national organization has provided him with support. As the final fall semester in UTPA history concludes, we reflect on Pan Americans' decades of excellence. And we have you covered with the latest on weather and UTPA athletics. Bronx News starts now. Hello UTPA and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Bronx TV News. Today is Wednesday, November 26th, 2014. I'm Daniel Gabon. And I'm Dina Vera. Things are falling into place as UTPA transitions into UTRGV continued this past week with phase two of hiring for the university wrapping up. That's right, Dina. Many students around campus have been wondering how is this going to affect their favorite professors? Well, Bronx TV's Vanessa Matez actually spoke to UTPA's interim president and got the story. The transition of UT Pan American to UT RGV continues to unfold. One of the major decisions that is currently underway determines the size of the faculty and staff. The Phase 1 rehiring took care of the tenure track faculty. Phase 2, which just ended, is for the non-tenure track, the lecturers. The idea is to hire as many lecturers and clinical faculty that we can from both the Brownsville and the Edinburgh campus for UTRGV. So there is an application process. Uh, there are some criteria that the faculty uh, need to meet in order to transition over to UTRGV. So we'll have a good idea tonight. I think we're over 150 applications right now. We're expecting close to 200. Despite the lengthy process, some faculty were glad to have the opportunity to start anew. Yeah, it was good to kind of kind of look at what I've done, and I'm like, dang, you know, I've done a lot of nice things. You know, and in, in the magazine, you know, I'm the advisor for the magazine, and, you know, they've done some amazing things. Dr. Rodriguez assures students that UTRGV will keep the best faculty from UTPA. We have some excellent faculty and we have some excellent lecturers and clinical faculty at uh, UTPA and UT Brown. So I've been, I created a process for promotion of lecturers and clinical faculty. So uh, I got to see the type of faculty we have here. So the expectation is that uh, the overwhelming majority of these faculty will be hired. Pazdera says that she is looking forward to the changes that UTRGV will bring. I'm excited just that, um, you know, we're becoming part of something bigger and, um, you know, that the university will now have access to this big pot of money and, you know, they'll be able to do stuff with it. I mean, not salaries, but, you know, build things. For Bronx TV, I'm Vanessa Matis. Last week, a forum was held at the Student Union Theater allowing students to voice their opinion on whether tuition should be raised for UTRGV. Jennifer Galindo has more on the story. The UTRGV Tuition and Fees Task Force held a session November 20th in an effort to gather students' input. UTPA and UTB have the lowest tuition and fees among all 37 Texas public universities. As of fall 2013, UTPA is ranked 36 and UTB ranked 37. The task force recommends capping all tuition at 12 credit hours, which would allow all students taking 13 or more hours to cap at the same price as 12. Additionally, the task force believes that the 12 hour cap will encourage students to carry an average of 15 credit hours per semester in order to graduate in four years. The longer you take to graduate, the more you postpone earnings and the more debt you incur. So it is to your benefit to graduate in less time and to be focused. The task force will recommend eliminating certain fees and funding by establishing a university service fee. These include the information technology access fee, advising fee, and the record registration fee, among others. We need to have more of these, and not just one forum for one topic, but several forums for one topic would 
get students motivated to come to the second one and let the word propagate among the campus. The task force is expected to forward its recommendations to the UT RGV president, Guy Bailey, in early December. All the recommendations by the task force can be found at the utrgv.edu website. If you walk into the cafeteria around lunchtime, you'll recognize that familiar smell of cookies or brownies or other delicious desserts. But who's behind those tasty treats, you may ask? And Nancy Botea went behind kitchen doors and found out. Her day begins at 6 a.m. I make my schedule myself, and I know what I have to do to finish my work for the day. Maria Bermea has been working at the Bronx Dining Hall for over 40 years. At first, because I had my family and I had a lot of opportunities to leave when I needed to, and the managers really helped me out. Throughout her years in the dining hall, Bermea has had several jobs. I started working washing dishes, later in the kitchen and the deli. And now she is the one and only baker at the UTPA dining hall. That's where I feel the most comfortable and I like the work that I do. She's a workhorse. Uh, she's one I really don't need to worry about as far as production. I just give her her menus for the week and she knows exactly how much to make. She can just, you know, she can, uh, she can make a lot of things. Uh, she's great. So next time you're enjoying your dessert, be sure to remember all the care and hard work that goes into it. For Bronx TV News, I am Nancy Boteo. The news of President Barack Obama's executive order on immigration has impacted practically every area of the country. For a look on how it's affected the RGV, J.P. Hernandez has the story. An estimated 4 million immigrants will benefit from administrative relief. It is just one of the new immigration policies announced by President Barack Obama on Thursday evening. Body for justice! Body for justice! Students and families gathered at UTPA to watch President Obama's plan of executive action to fix the nation's immigration system. 21-year-old Roxana Menchaca is glad that her mother is one of the undocumented to receive deferred action under the revamp policies. Seeing her reaction, how uh, finally she, she'd be able to not drive in the streets uh, with that fear of being deported because as we know border patrol is all over the place here in the valley. Deferred action for childhood arrivals known as DACA has expanded to an approximated 290,000 and is now valid for three years. Unfortunately, Dreamer's families were overlooked. The U.S. needs to put families over politics. They need to know that families are more important and it's the base thing that they need to worry about and that they need to focus about. United with Dreams Maria Castro explained some of the other policies that apply to those eligible. Another one is that the advance parole um, for people who have deferred action is going to be a little bit more lenient. We still don't know the details of what that means, um, but I know many people want to go visit their families at home and see their loved ones before they pass away. It is a bittersweet win for all involved. Menchaca reiterates that the fight for families that didn't qualify is not over. The fight does not end now. You know, we won't stop fighting till there's justice for all. For BRTV News, I am JP Hernandez. Organizations across the Rio Grande Valley have been lending a hand to provide the community with food for the holidays. Daniel Galvan shares the different ways they have been helping. With Thanksgiving on the horizon, Organizations in the McAllen Edinburgh area are donating their time and effort to provide a meal for families in need. Those who don't have um, food for Thanksgiving, they don't, they have, they would like to celebrate it, but they don't have, they don't have food. So we are coming together to, um, to help them out. Here at UTPA, the UNICEF organization sponsored a food drive here on campus to collect canned goods for the RGV food bank. The organization's co-founder and president, Bianca Blanco, described the motivation for the drive. A lot of students on campus, we like to give back. And so we all care about everybody else and we all want to make sure that we have a good holiday, Thanksgiving holiday, but we also think about those who probably won't be able to have one because of the lack of food. Outside of UTPA helping fill up the food bank, holiday cheer can be found at the Salvation Army. On Thanksgiving Day, the Army is expected to serve about 1,000 freshly cooked meals. 
Captain Luis Melendez explained the satisfaction he gets helping serve the community. The satisfaction is that, that the Salvation Army is here to feed and we can do it mass that day. I want them to come here and feel that it's they're sitting at their table with their mom and their brother and their sister and their friends. And we are everybody's friends in Christ. From UTPA to the Salvation Army, RGV residents are doing their best to ensure that every Valley community member has a happy Thanksgiving. Reporting for Bronx TV, I'm Daniel Galvan. Well, Dan, as much as I love Thanksgiving food and spending time with my family, the one thing I don't like about this time of year is definitely the cold weather. I kind of agree with you, but it's looking like Thanksgiving this year, at least from a weather perspective, is going to be a little bit different than years past. In fact, Sergio Puente has you covered with this week's weather forecast. Good afternoon, Valley. Thank you for tuning in to Bronx TV Weather. I'm Sergio Puente. Let's take a look at your overnight conditions tonight. You can see temperatures will be in the upper 40s across the entire Rio Grande Valley. So it's going to be another cool night across the region for Wednesday into Thursday for Thanksgiving, actually, Thanksgiving morning. By tomorrow afternoon, which is Thanksgiving, you could expect temperatures will be in the mid 70s across the entire Rio Grande Valley with temperatures pretty warm up there in Rio Grande City at around 79 degrees. So it's going to be rather warm up here um, in South Texas. For our almanac, you could see temperatures will be 92 degrees. That was set in ooh, a long time ago there. 35 degrees 1911 that was a, also a very long time ago so we don't we're nowhere near any of those record highs and lows our sunrise was at 7 a.m and our sunset is at 5 41 p.m this thanksgiving afternoon our next three days we could see temperatures will be in the mid 70s across the region again with uh with a pretty warm conditions coming into your early start of the week by monday you can see temperatures will be 81 degrees so it's going to be pretty warm for this time of this time of year in the Rio Grande valley by Tuesday, you can expect an isolated chance of a shower or thunderstorm with a 20% 20, 20 chance there, but that will clear up by Wednesday as temperatures are back into the upper 70s then. That was a look at your Bronx TV weather forecast. I'm Sergio Puente, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Back to you in the studio. In less than a year, UTPA will merge a UTB to create UTRGV. And while the name of the university is changing, what won't be lost for UTPA is the school's eight and a half decade history. Tyler Zimmerman takes a look at UTPA through the years. For third generation UTPA alumni, Missy Cadenas Barajas, these yearbooks represent the change of UTPA throughout the years. Uh, my grandfather was one of the first graduates um, in 1928. Um, and was there until 1930. Barajas was a student during the transition from Pan American University to the University of Texas Pan American and says despite the change, school spirit remained strong. I remember absolutely no negative changes. I mean, it was always um, a change for the better. It was giving us more resources. It was giving us more opportunities for different types of education. I don't believe that there was anything negative um, from any of the changes at all. Um, but with the change, there was always something good that came around from it. It was very, very welcomed, um, which is quite different because anytime somebody incorporates any kind of change, there's always resistance. Names may change, mascots may change, but one thing that remains constant through all of this is providing a quality education for all those who attend. I am excited to go to UTRGV because it's a new step to my journey. It's Apart from coming to SDC, I learned how to deal with professors and how to deal with um, the difficulties in class. So I think I'm going to have a head start in UTRGB. So I am excited. UTPA is one of the fastest growing universities within the UT system with enrollment of up to 19,000 students. That number is only going to grow when the new chapter is written and the launch of UTRGV. Reporting live in the studio, I'm Tyler Zimmerman. Thank you, Tyler. A middle school preteen became a victim of false accusations. The toxic school environment leaves Jesse with a few options. Omar Jimenez gives us an insight of Jesse's situation. They called me a or a or gay or Miley Cyrus. These are the words that 11-year-old Jesse Franco is told by his classmates every day, even though he is not gay. In Raymondville, Texas, the community is getting attention. You know, it just seems around here that you can't be any kind of different because if you're any kind of different, um, you're a target. At Myra Green Middle School, where Jesse attends, he has tried to stand up to the students who bully him. I would 
get angry and I'd tell them again and if they ignored me I would I would fight but attacking back only made matters worse as he was punished some of them were ISS and the rest of them are all all of them the rest of them were two days out of school suspension I did everything that you're supposed to do as a parent, everything that you can possibly do as a parent, I did it. As they went to the school district for answers, I contacted Ravenville ISD officials for comment. They sent us this statement stating, The Ravenville Independent School District takes allegations and incidents of bullying very seriously. Student safety is our primary concern. Because federal privacy laws prevent the district from discussing any student with anyone other than the child's parents or legal guardian, we are prevented from discussing the specifics of this case. This building behind me has been ground zero of a nationwide campaign that's been giving support to Jesse Franco on his fight against bullying. And so he said he wished he could do that. And I said, okay. I said, you want to do this? And he said, yeah. And I said, all right. And we did it. And and that's what happened. After looking up several campaigns, No Hate interests Jesse. Even though its initiation started with the Prop 8 movement in California, they brought in to include No Hate at all. I don't know how many more kids have to die. I don't know how many more kids have to hang themselves. I don't know how many more kids. I don't know how many more kids have to hurt themselves. Jesse and Vanessa are not only receiving support in their own backyard, but the world through the power of social media. For Bronx TV, I'm Omar Jimenez. Thanksgiving is less than a day away, and I cannot wait till I get together with my family and eat tons of home-cooked meals. Absolutely. I love it when my aunt makes the stuffing. That's delicious. And when my grandma, she just knows how to cook a turkey just right, and my mother does the best job ever of buying pies. And every year, there's so many great meals at that Thanksgiving dinner table that it's hard to pick a favorite. Well, picking a favorite is definitely the toughest part of the holiday. Our Karen De Los Reyes stepped out into the street and figured out the answer to that question. It's Thanksgiving week here at UTPA, and students are excited about the holidays. I went on the street to find out what their favorite Thanksgiving meal is and what they're thankful for. What are you thankful for? I'm most thankful for my family because without them I wouldn't be here and I'm the first generation for college. Well, for my family, for my school, for my teachers, for just everyone around me. I'm thankful for many things and one of them is life and as well for my parents that have been able to stay together. I'm thankful for everything that my parents do for me. Um, thanks to them I have, I have an education, a place to live, um, things to eat every, every day. I'm thankful for my home because um, I know a lot of people don't have places to live, especially right now when it's cold outside, so I'm thankful that I have a home. And uh, what is your favorite dish on Thanksgiving? Definitely turkey. Turkey, it's the best of all, and cranberry sauce and all that. Pecan pie all day. I was going to stop you before you even set the other option, but yeah, pecan pie. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. No matter how you put it, like twice baked or just a regular potato, I just love potatoes. Potatoes is my favorite. Pecan pie. It's my favorite. My favorite food for Thanksgiving would be the turkey. Um, the stuffing especially. That's some good stuff. Tamales, if that counts. Whether it be turkey, pie, or their family, UTPA students have a lot to be thankful for as the holidays approach. Reporting for Bronx TV, I am Karen de los Reyes. Well, now we are joined by our own sports correspondent, Joseph Teo. And Joseph, the basketball season's underway. I know you just attended the home opener this past Saturday. How's the men's basketball team looking? Well, the men's basketball team is off to a hot start. They are 3-0, and their best start since 06 and 07. They went on to win another game, you know, to start off 4-0. Uh, the men's basketball team beat Texas A&M University Kingsville 82-77 in which Gennari Josar, a premier player for our team, our WAC player of the week honors scored a career high 27 points hitting three three-pointers and 12 free throws. The men's basketball team will be playing in a tournament at Utah tonight at 7. And the women's team also has quite a few games under their belt. How are they doing? Well, the women's team is off to a hot start too. They are 3-0 as well. They are coming off a huge home win in which they beat the Eastern Michigan Eagles 
80, 81 to 75. Shante Goff, a premier player for our team, led the team in scoring with 26 points, two steals, and a block. Pretty interesting stuff right there. They will play number six, Texas, tonight at seven as well. Wow, well, big game tonight, and I'm sure when you guys see this, we'll know the result. Good luck to the UTPA women's basketball team, and thank you, Joseph. Uh, that does it for today's edition of Bronx TV News. We want to thank you for joining us. And if you have a story idea, go ahead and let us know. You can do so by liking our Facebook page at facebook.com slash TV Radio or our Twitter page at Bronx TV Radio. Use hashtag story ideas to let us know any stories that you want covered. And also go and check out the Bronx TV page at utpa.edu backslash BRTV. Stay tuned right after this broadcast. Bronx TV in Spanish is up next. For Bronx TV, I'm Daniel Gavon. And I'm Dina Vera. Thank you and have a happy Thanksgiving.